I was like, I, I'm glad. I don't, who wants birds to eat? Like, as a kid, I'm like, good God, I'm glad. Like, yeah, I just had visions of the birds like pecking out my eyes. Um, she would say, um, pull the rot rag out of your ass. Um, she would say, want in one hand, shit in the other, see which one fills up faster. <laughs> which I never actually, I, what I never actually did. Um, uh, she'd say, uh, your taste is all in your mouth. So take that one home. <laughs> um, and, uh, but really, she, she was great for, for that. And so one of my favorite moments is uh, sitting with her having breakfast one morning when I was about 19. And uh, I had been at the bar the night before in Canada. I grew up in Detroit. And so you could drive to Canada at 19 and go get shit-faced and drive back across the border. And um, I was sitting there with my mom and... She said, how was your night last night? And I was like, oh my god, this guy was totally making fun of my bleach blonde hair. <laughs> my mom said, well, what did you do? And I was like, well, I did what any other 19-year-old girl with no self-respect and daddy issues did. I made out with him and gave my phone number. <laughs> but I didn't say that to her, really. I was like, I don't know, mom. I mean, what would you have done? She, and she looked at me, and she's like, you know what you should have said? And I said, no, what should I have said? And she said, you should have said, well, when I dye my hair, I mix a batch for the patch, too, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me a moment. I was like, batch for the patch, batch for the patch. Oh, okay, okay. Carpets, batch the graves. Okay, I get it, I get it. So, um, you know, she also made up her own language. So her name is Pat. We call her Ratatat Pat, or RTP for short. And so she had words that she always used that she made up, like, a damn it. So she'd say... I'm very adamant that you don't stay out past two. I'm like, Mom, you're adamant that I don't stay out past two. And she's like, no, damn it, there, you don't have to stay out past two o'clock. Nothing good happens after two p after two a.m. I'm adamant about it, damn it. And I was like, okay, all right, I get it. Another one of her favorite sayings was, um, she'd say, fuck them if you can't take a joke, right? And so the, my mom, you know, dropped F-bombs left and right. She used the word as a noun, pronoun, adjective, verb, you name it. So <laughs> I'm surprised it wasn't, it wasn't my, uh, my, my first word, actually. But um, the other thing is, is like, she, you know, as she would mess words up, she would, you know, she would use words like, um, she lives in Florida now, so uh, she's run over a few armadillons. <laughs> so I'll use it in a sentence. Um, I ran over a goddamn armadillon on my way to work, and I stopped to make sure that fucker was dead before I went on. <laughs> palmetto bugs are palmetto bugs, as in when I get home, I run into the fucking house and close the door before those goddamn palmetto bugs can get in my house. Uh, she messed up words. You know, she, my mom uh, subscribed to the National Enquirer and the Star Magazine and things like that. And she'd get really upset when they were at the grocery store before they, she got them in her mailbox. And you, we'd make fun of her and she'd be like, well, you can make fun of me all you want, but I know what Justin Timberland and Colin Farewell are doing before you do. <laughs> So, um, and, and she would mess up some of these sayings that she loved to say, too. So she'd say things like, well, you know what they say. I'm like, no, Mom, what do they say? And she'd say, well, uh, you know, the acorn that falls far from the tree, if it falls in dog shit, you can't eat it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not how that goes. <laughs> so my mom took me out, my mom took me out to, uh, one night to, uh, um, have the sex talk. And not like the sex talk as in like, you know, let's talk about the birds and the bees, but she wanted to ask me if I was being sexually active. And so uh, I, I knew it was coming, you know, and this is a woman who's like, what is your fucking problem all the time, was very reserved. And so went through the dinner and she didn't say anything. And we get back in the car and she's about to start the car and she's like, are you having sex with douchebag? <laughs> she didn't say douchebag, but you know, I could read the context of his name the way she was saying it. And I said, yes, uh, yeah, mom, yeah, I am. And she said, do you want to be put on birth control? And I said, why, yes, I do. And she said, all right, damn it, but it is not a fucking license to bend over. Do you understand me? <laughs> and I just had this view of like me as like with the, like the Wile E. Coyote cartoon with like a you know, sigh next to my ass, like, it's okay, I'm a birthday. <laughs> so then she took me to my 
doctor, which was my childhood doctor, the woman who like, you know, gave me my vaccinations, you know, she treated me for chicken pox, and now this woman, you know, she kissed my boo-boos, and now she's looking at my hoo-ha. <laughs> and so, of course, I'm very, very uncomfortable with this, and so the, the, the doctor comes in, and she, you know, gives me my exam, and, and uh, at the end of it, you know, without warning, she sticks her finger in my blood. And I'm like, whoa, I don't know what you think I'm doing, but I am not doing that. No, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. And so we get in the car to go home, and I am like, I look like a ghost. I'm like, my face is white, and uh, my mom looks at me, and she's like, what is your fucking problem? <laughs> and I was like, mom, Dr. McDonald put her finger in my butthole. And my mom's like, well, you know what they say. I'm like, no, mom, I don't. I don't know what they say. And she said, you want to run with the big dogs? You got to take a finger in the ass, girl. Thank you. I was in the car and we were driving and I was like, I'm so excited, I'm gonna get some Adidas cleats. And he was like, sex is holy. And I was like, shit. And I, just, I just remember like sitting in the car like this, looking out the window like this. I wouldn't even look at him. He's like, he's like, Kelly's sex is holy. And I was like, Adidas, Adidas, I just want some cleats. I just, uh. and he's like, no, sex is holy. It's all about love. Right, Claude, am I right? Is this how the sex talk goes? Your daughter's sitting beside you. <laughs> I will not talk about how I was raised, but obviously it works because, like, my daddy issues. I get paid to talk about my daddy issues on stage. It's amazing. Um, all right, you guys, I'm going to keep this show going. We have so many more comics. I'm very excited. Um, your headliner is coming up soon, Taylor Rogers. He's sitting in the green room right now. Taylor, Taylor Rogers! Taylor, did you eat any cookies in there, yet? I don't know yet. <laughs> Taylor is a fan of our snacks. He knows we're like stoners because there's like hummus. Oreos, Funyuns, like none of it makes sense. You guys are more than welcome to have some if you walk in there. All right, your next comment coming to the stage is an Asheville guy. Some people say that he looks like Conan O'Brien. Um, I don't know. I think you guys should be the judge. Let's chant his name, Nick. Nick, 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 Nick Murphy, everybody clap your hands. Come on, Nick, show some energy. You're feeling really good, aren't you? I feel really excited that you're up here. I don't like passing off the mic. It's not professional. All right, thank you. It's, it, it's just proper etiquette. It's like passing the salt. You gotta set it down on the table. You can't hand it to you. We're, we're, we're not primates here. Hey, everybody. I, I'm sorry. I, uh, thank you for chanting for me. That's very kind of you. I just... Uh, my self-esteem was drilled out of me at such an early age that I know that I never deserve a chant. Like, I'm never going to be the guy carried off a football field in glory. Like, I I'm the guy on the sidelines, like, like, I wish I had that ability, ever. Uh, sorry to get off on a depressing note. Nice to be here. Nice to see all of you happy, smiling people. You know, try to keep that happiness going. You have a fun 4th of July? Go down to South Carolina, blow some shit up. Anybody? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of all South Carolina is good for at this point. And they're, I'm pretty sure their economy is entirely driven by North Carolinians driving down there once a year, maybe twice. I don't know, New Year's. I spent my, the morning of July 4th uh, in line for breakfast at McDonald's. Because I figured it was the perfect American thing to do. And like, I, re I, spent, I spent a long time. That nobody was at the damn counter when I walked in, and that proceeded to be the case for the next 15 minutes. As me and some woman uh, were waiting together, she actually already had her food on her tray and was clearly waiting for some, some sort of condiment in a foil wrapper. Uh, and um, 
It, I, she was just kind of like the picturesque, depressed southern woman. Like, it was really sad. Like, pale blue jean shorts, like a pale blue shirt. It was one of those shirts, it was like just a shirt. Like, not a blouse. You can't, like, it was like a pale one color shirt. I think they stopped putting like interesting patterns and designs on shirts once they reach a certain width. <laughs> like, the designer just gives up. It's like, why should I care? They don't care. Really. Um, like, actually, and then, and it, the, the juxtaposition of the, the, the two of us really, like, hit me afterwards. It was just an overweight, depressed southern woman and a young asshole, 20-something, entitled douchebag, both waiting in line at McDonald's with scowls on our faces. It's like a modern-day Norman Rockwell. <laughs> um, during the course of our waiting, her husband, like, sort of waddles up, and they have, like, one of those, like, fat conversations. It's the only way I can describe it. Where, like, you can't really understand what's being said. Um, I, all I picked up from the conversation was two words. It went kind of like this. Uh, mumble, 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 syrup and mayonnaise. <laughs> What the f- It's breakfast time! Yes. There is not a breakfast food on the planet that you can put mayonnaise on. The earliest point in the day that you're allowed to eat mayonnaise is like 11, 11, 15, and that's only if you have the BLT. Like, anything before that, she had some sort of like sandwich on her tray, it was like a mick, wrap, mick, muffin, it, the two pieces of fattening shit with some egg in between. Not, not a mayonnaise palatable item. I thought I misheard her at first, and then the person finally came up, and before he could take my order, he had to answer her. She's like, sir, sir, can I get some mayonnaise packets? He's like, all right, and starts walking over to the buckets where they keep such things. And he had his hand already going for a bucket and had to stop himself and looked up. and was like, you said mayonnaise packets? <laughs> he was in the ketchup, basically. Yeah, nope, man, down and to the left. Yes, mayonnaise packets. Uh, and... He gives them to her, she goes away. Uh, but there's an important thing that happened there. The original, the, the conclusion of her fat conversation with her husband was that she needed syrup and mayonnaise. And we were waiting there so long, I think that her brain just kind of focused on and like got rid of all the superfluous anything and just focused in on the things she really wanted at the point, the mayonnaise. She had pancakes on her tray, and she forgot the fucking syrup. <laughs> uh, who, who am I to judge, really? I was there to order a syrup-infused pancake breakfast sandwich. McGriddles are pretty awesome, you guys. Uh, yeah. It was a fun July 4th, what can I say? Uh, he, here's an here's a interesting statistic for you guys. Um, the number of men who shave their balls with the same razor that they use to shave their face uh, is equal to the... <laughs> He's proven my point before I've made it. It is equal to the number of men who shave their balls. One and the same, everybody. Like 99% across the board. And I, I know this because of a, a study I did. I, I went around and I asked uh, two people, uh, me and my roommate. And the interesting, interesting footnote to, to that story, to, the, to that study, uh, the number of men who shave their balls with the same razor that their roommate uses to shave their face. <laughs> Trust the board. Thank you guys, I've been with Murphy. Murphy. Keep it going for that guy for going. I heard ya. <laughs> that was hilarious. What's your name? What's your name, handsome? Okay, don't. Let's pretend this never happened. I want to talk to you after the show, though. It's not you. It's you. It's not you. It's me. It's not me. It's you. Okay, it's fine. Who wants a sticker? Do you want a sticker? Sure. Okay. All right, thank you for supporting live comedy. Who wants a, um, a koozie? Do you want a koozie? Oh, this girl's really cute. Sorry, Todd. 
Who wants a koozie? Ty. Oh. Alright you guys, I just want to tell you just really quickly, Orangefield puts on a festival every year. It's called Dig Fest. There are a lot of stickers out there and a little poster. Just check it out, okay? Okay, thanks for listening. Um, we are going to keep the show going. Your next comedian coming to the stage is an Asheville guy. He ran comedy at Tino's house, and he actually works here, and he's actually just a really nice, funny guy. Everybody clap your hands for Alex Neff. <laughs> Harry and H Henderson's moment. My apologies. Jesus Christ. Once that's behind us. Um, I'm actually trying to spearhead a movement. I'm trying to get laziness uh, recognized in the DSM-4. I'm trying to recognize it. What's that? Work-induced mood disorder. It's like that way, all my negative personality aspects can be completely, completely resolved. <laughs> It's like, oh, you're a lazy, alcoholic, sex-addicted bastard. It's like, oh, bless your heart. <laughs> you're trying so hard, I can't believe you're functional. <laughs> I go from asshole to inspirational story in like three seconds. <laughs> Please help. Now, um, unfortunately, my girlfriend was not too pleased with that joke. Um, we do get into a lot of arguments, and they usually end the same way. <laughs> I mean, I try to be a nice guy. It's like, I love you, I love you too. And in my mind, I'm like, well, obviously you make poor decisions. It's like, she's lost all credibility at that point. It's like, you love a giant, ridiculous man-child. It's like, I don't shave, not because of like a fashion thing, just because I never learned how to. It's like, all my food comes out of the microwave and usually on a stick. That's how you get this physique. Yeah! All round bearded guys in Asheville, aka 85%. <laughs> We're cute. <laughs> and kind hearted. Because we have nothing else going on. Um, speaking of, um, I think our society has reached the peak of what I hope is ignorance. Uh, we've been preparing for what we think is the biggest problem facing our society, actually our species, the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> like there are whole camps of people preparing for this highly implausible scenario. It's like usually like their whole survival experience is they went to summer camp once and they're really good at Left for Dead. <laughs> It's like they're looking for a fucking thing. Where's the health packs? I want the safe room with the ammo dump. Yeah, they're cute. But uh, actually, the whole point of me coming up here is just to share a true story. Uh, a friend of mine here, like, I, I went to school for a year and a half. I was an English major. And uh, actually, this shit's it. You're taking the fuck out of me. I'm a little anal retento. Um, actually, let me back up. One of my ex-girlfriends got pissed off at me recently because um, I'm kind of a grammar Nazi. I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to that, if you haven't noticed. And um, I remember we were, how do I say this? We were mid-coitus. And she's like, oh, you fucking be so good. Was, hmm. Well, I'm fucking you well. She kind of shook it off. She went over, just put it back in. And that's not a small dick joke. I just kind of looked at her. And I said, Don't in the sense of the preposition. Though I give her points for punctuation because she was on a period. Oh, that's the fucking point. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Re-examine. So anyway, a friend of mine, she was telling me that she wanted to, you know, reevaluate like her life and go back to school. And I was really excited for her. I was trying to be like that, you know, really friendly, you know, supportive friend. 
said, oh, you're going back for art? Because she's an amazing artist. Said, you go back for art or you're going to change your major? She says, no, I just need to kind of, you know, recenter my life and find where I'm going. I'm going to go to, and I wrote this down, I swear to God. This is the name of a real school in Asheville. The Venus Rising Shamanic School for Psycho-Spiritual Studies and the Shamanic Ministers Global Network. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to which I responded, hmm. Is it accredited? She said, oh, she kind of just prattled off. And she told me, okay, well, the right of it is that they, they have a, a meditation course where you have crystals, you can kind of recenter yourself, focus your chakras, get your energies in line. They have breath work, they have gardening, and uh, they have cooking classes. So, okay, so let's examine this. You have nap time with rocks. Breathing, which I'm pretty sure, pretty sure is an autonomic response at this point. You guard for them and cook for them. You're an indentured servant at this point. I was like, how much are they charging you for the copper pyramid hat? She's like, oh, about 150. I was just fucking worth it. That's a true goddamn story. Please send our responses to Linda Starwolf. She's the dean of admissions. All right, well, I've got time for one more joke. Do you want to hear it about lesbian porn, Jesus, or hula hoop girls? Oh, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, they are the growing epidemic, besides zombies, apparently. Uh, bless their hearts. And, uh, yeah, I do have kind of... Kind of some animosity, because one of the girls I used to date used to be a hula hoop girl, and I tried to understand it from her point of view. And this is the way she explained it to me. Sometimes I have a bad day. I need to go out there and express myself and hoop it out. Which made no goddamn sense to me whatsoever. Which may explain why we didn't last all that long. But, you know, as Kelly said, I, I, I do work here. I've worked security for a lot of places. The last thing I'm going to do when I see one of these, how do I put it kindly, uh, is vacuous twat a political correct term. Yeah, yeah. So what I was seeing with these uh, PTs or VTs uh, show up, he's like, "Yeah, okay." She's had a bad day. She needs to hoop it out. Everybody just back up against the wall. I know it's crowded. We're at capacity. God bless you, hula hoop girl. You're so brave. Oh God, I hurt my taint on that one. That's for you, folks. I think that's my time. <laughs> Everybody, I'm not saying that word. Claude and his daughter are sitting there. I'm not going to say that word. It ain't appropriate. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid. I hate myself. I'm going to kill myself right now. I'm going to cut my wrist the right way. That's not true. I'm not. I'm not suicidal. My, I have a drunk dad, and my dad's an alcoholic, and he's a hot mess. Like, if he had a ship, it would be called the SS Hot Mess. He's such a hot mess, but he gives me all kinds of material. Like, when he asked me to come over for Father's Day, I was like, ugh. Although our relationship is struggling, the one with me in the pool in his backyard is not. So, good times, you guys. Uh, your next comedian coming to the stage was originally just a comedy fan, and he has made his way into our comedy family, and now is a regular performer in Asheville, North Carolina, and he has a huge uh, part in the Laugh Your Asheville Off Comedy Festival coming up here in August, so everybody clap your hands for Ryan Folks. Good morning. Oh. Hey, thanks everybody. Good morning for Kelly. So uh, just to give you guys some, like, some idea of what my life's like right now, uh, I was wandering around the mall half drunk at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon the other day. Uh, not the good mall either, the shitty mall, the, the Biltmore Square Mall. I don't, I don't know if any of you guys have been there recently, but it is a sad state of affairs. There's, uh, there's about three stores that are still open. There's uh, like Bath and Body Works has been there forever, I think. 
Um, and then there's like a pawn shop kind of thing and an arcade where none of the games work. Uh, but there's this one business that looks like they've been closed for about two years and they were nice enough to leave their sign up so you could see why they failed as a business. Uh, they were called Totally Christian Karate. <laughs> I don't even know how that's supposed to work. Like, well, Billy, if somebody tries to hit you, you turn the other cheek. And here's your black belt. That's, that's all we've got to teach you. So any of you guys ever wonder if you might have Asperger's? Just Nick Murphy, okay. Um, well, uh, like, the, the other day I'm at a bar and this guy comes up to me and he's like, he's like, hey man, are you an Aspie too? And I was like, I'm not sure I know what that means. And he goes, he goes, well, I have Asperger's and I've been watching you from the back of the bar for about an hour. And I'm pretty sure that you have it also. And like when a, when a stranger approaches you and his like first thing he says to you is, do you also have Asperger's? <laughs> like it's a, you gotta seriously re-examine how you're presenting yourself in public. <laughs> like I was, was not aware that high functioning autism is what I was uh, putting out there when I was trying to talk to ladies at the bar. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, I realized the other day that I'm not using credit cards the right way. Uh, one of my friends was like, yeah, you know, I keep one for emergencies. I pay it off at the end of every month. And I was like, oh, that's not what I've been doing at all. <laughs> uh, I thought the way that a 20-something responsibly used a credit card was to just max it out and then hope for the best. And uh, I don't know if any of you guys have ever balled so hard that motherfuckers want to find you, but that <laughs> yeah, not shit is crazy. Um, but it's cool, like, I, it's still, like, a pretty manageable amount of debt. It's a lot uh, less than most of my friends have in student loans. Uh, the difference between me and them is that they graduated college, and I have an iPad, and a drinking problem. Um, so, uh, I've been single for about the last three years. And uh, the other day I was like kind of questioning that and then uh, later on I, I actually talked to a woman and I think I've got it figured out. Uh, she was like, she was like, I, I just saw that movie The Dark Knight and I stopped her immediately and was like, um, I think you mean The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> the Dark Knight was a much better film that came out several years ago and here's many reasons why. First of all, Heath Ledger's Joker was a much better villain than Tom Hardy's Bane and like that's, that's it. <laughs> Put a pin in it, like that's a valid reason for her to not want to date me anymore uh, after that point. <laughs> Another example, uh, we were down in Greenville for a show a little while ago, and this girl comes up to me and she goes, hey, you kind of look like the guy from uh, Harry Potter. And like for a second I deluded myself into thinking that was a compliment, like, you know, you do kind of look like Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> and she's like, no, the one that ended up being the rat? <laughs> Peter Pettigrew, like in a, in a series full of ogres and snake people, I'm still somehow several notches below that. That rat face traitor, that's what she had picked out for me. Um, but uh, the last girl I dated uh, actually also really enjoyed stand-up comedy, and I think that that's one of the reasons uh, that I started performing, was to just take something that uh, she loves and ruin it for her. <laughs> It's like uh, comedy was our mutual best friend, and when we broke up, I won that friend. So, like we still get to go out drinking and stuff every other night. And uh, if she wants to hang out, she just got to go through me. And uh, like, so I wanted to ruin something she enjoyed, and like it was, it was either that or start a Radiohead cover band. And who has the time? Thanks very much, everybody. more time for Ryan Thurst. Ryan, I know you don't have Asperger's, because you just, I know you don't. And it's okay if any of you do, it's fine. I just appreciate coming out. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys having a good time? Yeah. These girls are dedicated, they're sitting in the floor. And I just want you to know it's so hot here because we're at capacity, so thank you. Give a round of applause, you guys, this is awesome. I'm glad you're having a good time. 
awesome. All right, your next uh, performer coming to the stage has been here a few times, and he is um, part officially part of our Slice of Life comedy family. Everybody clap your hands for Curtis McCarley. Very, very happy to be here. I'm, I'm happy just not to be in the ER anymore. Uh, I went Monday night, um, and I don't know about you, but it, it, whenever I feel like I'm dying, nothing makes me give up the will to live like the ER. I just, it's not, I hate this thing. There we go. It's not the, uh, it's not the doctor. I'm going to film a porn later. You'll see how this goes. Uh, it's, it's the people. It's the waiting. Um, I... No, I'm gonna get this here. There you go. Thank you. It's the waiting, basically. It's the people you wait with. Um, there was a guy in there, um, you know, there's no brain surgeons out in the waiting room, basically. There was a guy in there basically blew a chunk of his head off, and I was quite curious how this happened. As we all know, 4th of July was last week, and people stock up on fireworks. Uh, apparently, when you live in a trailer, it's just like an innate sense, especially. <laughs> and so, they were firing them off and, uh, on Monday night. So, you know the, uh, the mortars, right, where you drop it down, you light it, you drop it, and then it goes and a big shower sparks like, I don't know, what, 30 feet in the air? So, he lights it and drops it, and it doesn't go off yet. And so Copernicus goes over and looks in the tube and lost an eye. And I didn't really feel so bad for him too much because um, you just don't do that. But they had their kids with them, so that, that was the highlight of my night. Uh, I was watching the kids uh, run around like they were on crack. Because these aren't future senators, future bankers, future lawyers. That sounded a lot like a, uh, an Elton John song. Um, it, like, it's... You know, Judy's got to have her stomach pumped because she took too many of Mama's birth control pills. It's like, oh, Judy, you're 10. If you just waited three more years, you could have gotten your own prescription. <laughs> so then I, and then I get in the back, and it really gets fun after that because the nurse needs to take a blood sample, and uh, she comes at me, and I think she had whatever that thing that Michael J. Fox has, you know. I'm going to need blood from you. And I said, well, if you'll hand me a razor and something to bite on, I can do it quicker and less painful. <laughs> But, you know, awkward things are just going to happen as I it goes. I, uh, I work, um, where I work, I take pictures of the products that, that particular company sells. And um, I was, I like to listen to music in the back, so one day I happened to be listening to Jay-Z. And I know you look at me and you don't think, oh, a uh, rap connoisseur, but I do like to, uh, you know, get up on my seat and uh, jump around. <laughs> and, uh, so then somebody comes in, well, it, I, it's, the gentleman comes in, and I don't have on the edited version, basically, and it is an African-American gentleman, and I was going to turn it off just out of courtesy, because there's a lot of swearing in the song Big Pimpin'. Um, but I didn't want, apparently I offend people when I'm not trying to offend them because what I thought might offend them, it offends them that I thought that that might offend them. You follow me pretty much? So I figure I got one of three plans. I can either turn it off immediately, uh, I can either slowly turn it down, uh, or I can just let it ride and hope for the best. So I'm slowly turning it down. Well, he walks away, but it's clear he's about to walk right back as soon as he turns around. So I'm on Spotify, because I love Spotify. And it quickly switches to the next playlist, which is 60s folk music. And so he walks back in, and what was Jay-Z is now Oliver singing Starshine. Uh, if you don't know it, it's a nice little tune. Starshine, the earth says hello. It's like one of the top five honkiest songs ever written. <laughs> And he looks at me and he goes, you can put Jay-Z back on. And I go, no, it's Pandora. It picks it. And I was so proud of myself. I'm like, I got out of this scot-free. I didn't offend anybody. And I wouldn't have if I remembered to take Spotify off the screen. And he's still not talking to me. But that's just how it happens. Uh, oh, 4th of July, my niece came to visit from Georgia. Uh, and she's three and a half and so cute. She's not a blood niece. Uh, her mom I've known forever, and she's like a sister, and her little daughter, her name is Della, and I hadn't seen her in over two years, 
And the last time I saw her, I saw her a lot growing up as, like as a baby, but they're like pets more because they don't talk or move. They just like stink and make weird gurgling noises. But she's three and a half now. She's like this whole person that like, walks and talks and has ideas and throws rocks at people's cars so I get in trouble. But she's being raised, so I'm Uncle Curtis. So we go out, and she's got me right there, man, like right in the palm of her hand. She figured me out within an hour because we go, we finish eating dinner. And she goes, Uncle Curtis, I want some ice cream. I go, no, because Mama will kill Uncle Curtis if I feed you something with that much sugar. And she looks at me, and her lip quivers, and she goes, but I love you. All right, we got vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, raspberry, two raspberries, sprinkles, lots of sprinkles. Yeah, I love you, too. You, what, you want crack now? We haven't any crack for this kid. She loves me, and I just want to be loved. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. I love all of you too. So, thank you very much. Oh. oh woo! You. I thought she was coming to cut me off. I got one more. <laughs> but I don't have any kids, and I'm not old. I'm only 28, but I don't have any uh, um, of kids of my own. But my mom. Uh, I'm her. I'm an only son, and she wants to be a grandmother, and I can tell. And she used to be subtle about it, but not so much anymore. Uh, she saw. I saw her the other day, and she goes, "You know, I saw Stephen. He's two years younger than you." Oh yeah, I remember Stephen. He goes, "Well, he has. He's married with four kids." I'm like, "That's real subtle, mom." And, and she used to like have high standards for me. Uh, but now it's like, here, Mom, this, this is uh, heroin. Uh, she leads an all-female biker gang. Uh, she just broke her addiction to meth, and uh, she's joining the Nazi party. Oh, but her uterus works. Oh, she seems nice. That's my time. Thank you. Keep it going. Cover your hands for my buddy Curtis. That's funny. My mom always tries to hook me up, like, on blind dates. And so she's like, go out with this guy. He's great, blah, blah, blah. And for some reason, I must have been stoned. I was like, all right. And so I got to the restaurant, and I was, like, looking around, and I'm like, this better be good. It's a waste of my damn time. And then I look, and it's a policeman in full uniform, like, sitting by himself. And then I knew my mom loves a uniform. And I was like, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. She is like, now I can't leave because he has my information. Like, what am I... I'm like queen of Irish exits now. I cannot leave. This is ridiculous. I just sit there stoned eating dinner with the cop. I was like, <laughs> how did I get here? Thanks, Mom. That is the gift that keeps on giving. You bitch. No, I love my mom. Clap your hands if you love your mom. If you're not clapping, I hate you. Everybody should love their mom. All right, cool. Now that we have that out of the way, your next performer coming to the stage um, he runs his own comedy room, um, comedy night, every Friday night at the Bar of Soap, the laundromat um, bar on Merriman Avenue. That's awesome. That's badass. I'm just saying. Um, he also, this is awesome, just got um, in officially to the Laugh Your Asheville Off Comedy Festival, so you can see him at a club that is, that's huge. That's a nationwide festival, are you kidding me? 60 comedians from around the nation get in. That is it, in case you got in. So clap your hands, everybody, for Jason Webb. Thank you, Kelly. High as shit, I see. Uh, God damn it. Have you guys ever held a grudge against a fast food restaurant so long that it started affecting your relationships? <laughs> I hate Arby's, because they took advantage of me in 2004. Summer 2004, Jason discovers Mary Jane and has a great time with it. All right, I get high, and I want a roast beef sandwich. So I drive to Arby's, order a roast beef sandwich and a Dr. Pepper, and they charge me $25. Because they knew by my red eyes that I would pay any amount for a roast beef sandwich. <laughs> and I was on my second date with this girl, and we're going to the movies, and we're in the car talking about movies, because that's what you do. And I see the Arby's sign out of the corner of my eye, and I scream, 
Fuck fucking Arby's! <laughs> and see, she didn't know the story that you guys knew. And so I was like, please let her see me as a passionate man. <laughs> but she saw the opportunity to call her sister to have her pick her up at an empty Kmart parking lot at 10.30 on a Thursday. Arby's is ruining my life. I had a first the other day. Uh, it was the first time that someone gave me advice and I immediately ignored it in front of them. I was at a laundromat. I just got my load of wets and I'm putting them into the dryer. And this 70 year old man hobbles up to me because he's just waiting to give off some wisdom to some younger generation to prove that he still matters to someone. And he says, if you split that up, you will spend half the money and take half the amount of time. I'd already put my whole load in the dryer. And I looked him in the eye and just started putting in eight quarters. <laughs> Like, fuck you, old man. I didn't see the depression. I don't even know what these coins are, really. You remember working 12 hours a day and still pinching pennies? I worked six hours a day and just bought a Kia Rio. I don't give a fuck. I've been um, thinking about my own mortality a lot lately. And I realize that we all think about our own mortality. Like every morning, whether you believe it or not, your first thought is, oh, I'm not dead. I wonder if we have any everything bagels. <laughs> and if you don't know, you wake up your significant other. Honey, wake up. She wakes up scared to death. Ah, I'm not dead. <laughs> Where are we at on those bagels? <laughs> Have you ever woke someone up and you see the fear on their eyes? That's them realizing that they're still alive. <laughs> they're like, oh, I, I thought I was dead. <laughs> nope, just another day. <laughs> Last week I drank three bottles of Fireball whiskey and put a cigarette out on my arm. <laughs> And I went home with my ex-girlfriend. And I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning to her giving me CPR. Because I wasn't responding to her fucking story. I woke up on the third chest compression. You know what it's like to wake up in the middle of CPR? I thought I was coming back to life. And I saw her there, and I was like, this isn't a life worth living. I was going to let myself die at four in the morning. You're not hard like me. You don't know shit. You know what it's like to like realize that you're going to die and that you're okay with it? It's like turning off a game of Mario Kart and starting eighth grade. Yeah, it's been fun, but I'm older now. I know I don't need to do this anymore. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, this ain't, ain't tell me what jokes to do. I'll do your Boston Market if I can do one I want to do. Okay. Okay. Deal for so, um... I, I hit a new low this past week. Uh, I was upgraded to the VIP mailing list of the Boston Market email scheme. I forgot the joke. Oh, uh, well, oh yeah, that's a different one. Um, my sister, who's a gospel singer, uh, defriended me on Facebook. And it was because of a status I made about Boston Market that goes like this. 
Boston Market is running a gravy train on my butthole. <laughs> Called method acting, you fucks. <laughs> I should probably end on that, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to end on this. This isn't a joke, it's just an observation I had uh, downtown. Uh, I was going into the the kangaroo near Green Life. And there's this old man in there, he's probably about 65, and he's been drinking and he has cut off jean shorts. It's like I'm looking into the future. <laughs> and I go in there and he reeks of alcohol and he has the biggest box of condoms I've ever seen in my life. He's right in front of me and the, the cashier, she's probably about 47, but she's a rough 47. <laughs> And he goes up there, slams them down, and says, Are we going to fuck or what? <laughs> it's 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Monday. <laughs> That's tenacity. <laughs> we will never know that boy's pain. <laughs> I will. About 60 years. All right, thank you, folks. Please keep your hands going for Jason Webb, everybody. Like, every time we hang out, like, we all do comedy together, like, every night. So whenever we hang out, I'm like, Boston Market, Boston Market. Like, it never gets old for me. It kills me. Oh, my God. You guys are all like chatting and figuring stuff out. I'm just gonna see about all these connections. He just met Jessica, that's cool. Give it up, um, Jessica was great, right? Wow. She was awesome. Jason was good. I mean, seriously, you guys having a fun night? Yes, I so appreciate you coming out. We've got local celebrities in the audience. We have local celebrities in the audience, you guys. I'm looking at one right now, but I won't tell you who it is. I just looked away so you don't know. Now I just looked at her again. Anyway, it's all good. She's blushing. Um, all right, you guys ready for your headliner of the night? Yeah? I'm so glad you guys are here. This guy's hilarious. He has been on the scene for uh, over a year now. And he was, when he came onto the scene, I remember, he was instantly getting gigs. And instant, I mean, he was in the scene immediately. He's part of our comedy family. Um, everybody, clap your hands for Taylor Rogers. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thanks a lot to you guys for uh, sticking around. Thanks for coming out. Um, so, Jason was talking about that guy. Like, the thing about... The thing that was like, it's always weird buying condoms at a gas station. Because they... Like, a lot of times they keep them behind the counter. So you gotta ask for them. And asking for them is not weird. Like, we're all adults, but... It's weird when they ask you what kind you want, like, like, I don't know, like, what do you use? Like, I don't, I don't have like a, I don't have like a brand preference, just like, non-porous preferably, like, that's really my only criteria when selecting condoms. Like, six or seven months ago, I was, uh, it was a Saturday night and I was buying condoms and a six pack of beer at a convenience store and the guy who was ringing me up, he was like, all right, you have fun tonight. And that's fine, but like, what, I want, what I wanted to do was go in the parking lot until he was getting off work. And then as he was leaving the store, just start pelting him with condoms full of beer, just being like, don't be so presumptuous, you don't know me. <laughs> So there's this billboard that you can see driving around Asheville. It's for the Western North Carolina Nature Center. And it's for an otter exhibit. 
And the motto, the slogan is, bring your sons, bring your daughters, come on down and see the otters. I want to tell you guys something. If you're trying to write a slogan for an otter exhibit, you can't do better than that. <laughs> that is the gold standard. Bring your sons, bring your daughters, come on down and see the otters. You bang on a zinger like that, you're taking a two hour lunch break that day. <laughs> do you guys like rap music? I like rap music, I listen to a lot of it. Um, one thing that, one thing about rap is that, is that all the rappers are talking about haters, like people hate on me, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. Um, I, I just always wonder if like in their sort of quieter, more self-reflective moments they ever think about, maybe it's me. Like maybe, maybe, ev maybe everyone hates me because I sell cocaine in my own community and then rap about it in every song that I do. Maybe, maybe people hate me because I fuck all the hoes and then nobody else has any hoes to fuck. I mean like, Honestly, like, that's sort of greedy. I don't really, I don't really need to fuck all those hoes. Honestly, after the second or third, it's kind of diminishing returns. Feels worse more than feels good. I think the only real reason that I'm fucking all those hoes is just out of insecurity, just to impress my rapper buddies. I like doing that joke because I can say it for rapper buddies, which is not what they call themselves. <laughs> Did you ask what do they call themselves? That's cool. Sometimes when you do a stand-up comedy, you just don't have to respond. As long as you can just sidestep it. You just be like, oh, there's a tip fall. Like, um, I listen to funk music a lot. And the thing about funk music is that it's all about selling funk. Funk is all about selling funk music. All the songs are about funk. They're just like, get funky, stay funky. If you don't want to get funky, I hope your kids don't get into college. It's just like... <laughs> and I'm just sick of those artists' hardline stance, vis-a-vis funk. Like, I have been funky in the past. I will be funky in the future. Right now, I'm just trying to spend some quality time with my family. I don't need to be lectured by a man wearing a sequin cravat. And here's the thing about, here's the thing about, like rap, like rapper, rappers and funk musicians. Like, here's the difference between white musicians and black musicians. And I know that, like, you know, the difference between white people and black people is not a topic that's commonly covered by stand-up comedians. But just bear with me for a second. If you're black for whatever reason, we've decided to give black artists. Uh, like just leeway to be self-referential as artists. Like they can refer to themselves in their songs as musical artists. You know, like rappers do it all the time. They say their own name. You know, Parliament Funkadelic. You know, make my funk the P funk. But like, you can't do that if you're white. You can't like if you're Coldplay. You can't have a song about being like Coldplay, like being really good at, at like playing the bass. But you can't. I remember when I was a kid. I bought Metallica's first album, Kill 'Em All, and um, they have this one, they have this one song, and it's like, we'll never stop because we're Metallica. And I was like 12 years old at the time. The other album that I was listening to was Creed's Greatest Hits, because even though I owned all of Creed's studio albums, I wanted the Greatest Hits collection because they had some unreleased material. I was listening to Creed's B-sides at a time, and even I was like, man, Metallica is being super lame right now. Like this, like you just, you can't do it. I don't know, I like to think about, I don't know, I like to think about like, 
when I did that Coldplay joke a little while ago, somewhere in the world, Chris Martin is just like waking up on a bed full of money. And he hears that joke. And a single tear rolls down his cheek, and he's just like, man, I couldn't reach him. Um, so I was, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like this night has kind of lost a little bit of steam. I feel like you guys are a little bit fatigued. I don't know, I feel like we should, like, like, something needs to change, like, we need to kind of, like, we need to do something. Right, I mean, I already talked about that, it didn't work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide behind this curtain for a little bit. In an effort to appear more mysterious. So, I think I just turned the TV on accidentally, I hit it with my shoulder. So I saw this commercial a while ago, it was for uh, Pizza Hut. It was, for, it was for a product called Large Pizza Sliders. That's a ridiculous product, like Large Pizza Sliders, there's a lot to kind of unpack there. Like, number one, number one, you don't need, you don't need to have, like, sliders made out of pizza. Like, it's pizza. Like, it's, it's infinitely scalable. Like, it's, like, a square inch of pizza is like a square foot of pizza. It's like a fractal. It's like, if there's one thing that I want you guys to take away from the set, it's pizza fractals. Like you can't, like just cu like cut it into small pieces, it's fine. Like, and it's like large pizza sliders, like sliders are supposed to be small, that's, that's the entire point, this is a complete oxymoron. Like I don't know who's, I don't know who's ordering this product, just being like, ring ring, hello, Pizza Hut, how's it going? Uh, yeah, I'd like to order some little pizzas. You, mean some, you want some small pizzas? Nah, those are too big. You want some personal pan pizzas? Still too big. What about some pizza sliders? Nah, see, those are too small. What about some large pizza sliders? Thank you, that's the perfect denomination of pizza. I have a box of those. An 11 ounce bottle of Coach and half breadstick. Thank you so much, you saved my wedding. That's cool. I didn't, I didn't mean to spook y'all back there. It got really hot behind the curtain. Can someone bring me some water? Like, legitimately, I'm sweating. Um, open face sandwiches really push the concept of sandwiches to their breaking point. That's the end of the joke. You don't have to film me. You don't have to film yourself giving me water. Like that's maybe the least interesting vine that you could possibly put on the internet. Like, this water's not that cold, but I'm not going to make a big deal about it. Like, I'm not going to be a prima donna. <laughs> so, a couple years ago, I was living, uh, I was living in Waynesville with my parents. It was kind of a low point in my life. I didn't have a job. I didn't have, uh, I didn't have a fam, or I didn't have any friends. <laughs> Um, I didn't have any money. I didn't really know what I was go doing. I was like, you know, I want to go to Asheville. You know, at least there's a little bit going on there. I need to get some money. How can I get some money? And I was just like, 
my parents were like, well, you can just have a yard sale with like all of our old stuff that we don't use anymore. I was like, that's it, that's the ticket. That's how I'm gonna better myself in this world. I'm gonna sell my parents to try this to weird people down by the volunteer fire department. This is a great plan, I feel very good about it. And so I put out this ad in the paper. Um, I put out this ad in the paper saying like, uh, yard sale, seven o'clock in the morning. Yard sale people are weird. I was down there at like six setting up. This guy pulled up at 6.15 and he was just waiting in his car for me to like, like start the yard sale. And he's, he was like this old guy and he was just sitting in his car and he was just chilling out, waiting patiently. And I was like, man, just like, we're both here. Just like, I'm not, it, I'm not gonna like cut a ribbon. Like it's a yard sale. <laughs> You're pretty old, you don't have a lot of time left. Just come, just see what I, just see what I got. And the thing that I was most excited about selling at this yard sale was this box of these old apothecary bottles. They're really cool looking. And I don't know why anyone's laughing at that. Um, and, and like as this guy was coming closer, like, he had this baseball cap on and that I swear to God it said North Carolina Bottle Collectors Union local like 357 and it had like a little silhouette of a bottle on it. And it was just, I was like, holy shit. And this old guy sees my little bottles. He's gonna go fucking nuts. <laughs> And so the guy, he starts looking around, he finds the bottles, he's like kind of rifling through them and stuff. And I just sort of sidle up to him and I'm like, hey man, listen, like, I'm not gonna bullshit with you. Like, I can tell you're a man who got exquisite taste in bottles. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna try to pull a fast one on you. You're too, you're too smart for that. Like, I realize that, you know, you, you know what you're talking about, like, I get that, I respect it. Real recognize real, you know what I'm saying? I was gonna sell these for a dollar each. For you, 75 cents per. <laughs> I didn't say any of that. What I said was, excuse me, would you like to buy any of my little bottles? <laughs> and he looked at the bottles and he looked at me and he was like, nah, I'm fine. And he got in his car and he drove off. <laughs> and that was probably, and that was like one of the lowest points in my life. Like I didn't have any, I didn't have any money, I didn't have a job. My little bottles weren't even good enough for that one bottle guy. I have a lot of questions about the bottle collecting community after that. Like there was a three digit number on that man's hat. Like that's too many chapters of bottle collectors for one state. Like if I was gonna divide up the like administrative hierarchy of a bottle collecting union in North Carolina, I'd be like one chapter for the mountains, one for the Piedmont, one for the coast. Maybe a fourth one for the Charlotte Gastonia area. It's a large metropolitan area, more people, more bottles. <laughs> That's the credo of the bottle collecting union. More people, more bottles, it makes sense. A lot of you guys aren't digging this bottle material. I don't know why, I feel like it's... Should I go back behind the curtain? You guys like that. You, you guys thought that was silly, right? Yeah. So I was like, no, no. Don't do that, you're fucking... Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and move into the... Uh, the dick joke portion of the evening. So, someone said, yeah, just like, kind of, so, so like, come on, just like, all right, let's get it, let's get on with it, just, um, so, for guys, measuring the length of your penis is a lot harder than most people give it credit for. If you're a woman, you might be thinking like, well, that should be, should be fairly straightforward. But it's not, like there's a lot of questions, like do you measure 
measure from the side of the shaft, from the top, from the bottom. Like if, you measure, like if I measure from the bottom, I can easily get from the scrotal base. You know, I think is like I think is the uh, the clinical term for it. Like I can easily get an extra half inch out of that, and I'm not I'm not a greedy guy. I don't need to be in like the top you know, 95th percentile to feel good about myself. I'm just a regular guy, you know, trying to get to the top of that bell curve. <laughs> it's like, what if, what if you have a crooked dick? Like, do you measure, <laughs> do you measure around the like, contours or is it just strictly as the crow flies? You know, I don't know. I don't know if there's a, there's no, that's the thing, it's like there's no standardized protocol for this sort of thing. Are we going imperial units or metric? You know, it's like, it's a mess. That's what I'm saying, it's a mess. You know, and like, isn't just talking about the length of the penis solely, isn't that just, isn't that sort of reductive in a way? What about its other, other attributes, you know, like, like radius, you know, circumference, volume, what if I have a fairly average sized penis, but it displaces a lot of water? <laughs> I'd like credit for that. All right, you guys, you guys have been a hard crowd to read. It's just like, it's like curtains, yes. Otters, no. Bottles, no. Dicks, yes. <laughs> I think I got it. I think I got it. I think I got you guys' number. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this next d dick joke behind the curtain. So the University of California Santa Cruz The University of California, Santa Cruz, their mascot is the banana slug. <laughs> like, and a lot of people, a lot of people make fun of them for that because they're like, a oh, banana slug is like, that's not scary. But one true fact about the banana slug that a lot of people don't know is that when they mate, the male's penis gets stuck in the female and it has to chew its own penis off in order to extricate itself. <laughs> That makes Banana Slug the most terrifying mascot that you could possibly have. <laughs> that You're projecting to the other team, we're gonna fuck you and then chew our own dicks off. <laughs> that is fucked up, man. I don't wanna play basketball with y'all anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I cracked the code. <laughs> I mean, you guys have like, you guys have sort of weird tastes. You're just like, I wanna see some guy, like I don't wanna see the guy who's telling me about dicks. But once you figure that out, like for the rest of you guys going through open mic, like, that's, that's it. I say, you fucking, you tell them dick joke behind a, a veil of cloth and they're putty in your hands. <laughs> so my boss introduced me to this expression the other day and uh, whenever he's having a bad day, it will be like, man, I swear to God, I'm so unlucky today, I could reach into a barrel full of pussies and pull out a dick. <laughs> and I think, I love the expression, I think it's wonderfully evocative. I love thinking about some guy just being like... <laughs> oh man. <laughs> and then the guy who's in charge of the pussy barrel, he's just like... Move along son, back in the middle. <laughs> Thank you.
Why is that guy in charge of the pussy barrel? Quality control obviously isn't his forte. He's letting dicks get in there. These are literally the last thing you want in a barrel full of pussies. That's fundamentals. I'm just saying, like, I feel like it's time for a... Maybe for a change up in the pussy barrel administration hierarchy. It's like, I don't know, like... Let me be in charge of the pussy barrel. Um... So, uh, I don't know, I, I, I kind of zoned out for a second there. Um, anyways, this has been great. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for coming out. I've been Taylor Rogers. Uh, yeah. Please give it up for Taylor everybody for Taylor Rogers. I just watched all of your reactions. I know that was hilarious. I know you had a good time. All right, you guys. We're going to keep this show rolling on. Um, do y'all want to like talk about your feelings or does anybody have a question? It's like kirtan yoga. Like there's nothing. There's, are we meditating? You guys want to meditate with me? You guys are cute. Are y'all married? You're married. Okay, what about these guys in front of you? Are y'all married? Do you, you too, with the hat, golf hat, Arnold Palmer. You, are you married? Y'all are cute. Are you dating? Yeah. Did you guys eat dinner tonight together? You didn't. Y'all are so cute. Can I live vicariously through you? Okay, I'm, I am. Like I'm centering in. I'm feeling this energy, you guys. Um, you guys, the next performer coming to the stage has never been here to Pulp, so I want you guys to put your hands together and give her a warm Asheville welcome. Everybody, clap your hands for Dana Williams. Oh. Thank you. Doing a show at the slice of life, I never thought I could be so free. <laughs> What's... How is everyone doing tonight? Well, since you asked, I'm doing fine. Thanks. I appreciate that. What's good, everybody? What's good? A lot of my friends ask me, what's good? And I never know how to respond to that. I'm always just like, uh, blueberry muffins? Those are good. Do you love Hewitt early work? Okay. I had a 20-minute conversation with my grandmother a couple days ago about how it was impossible for a fly to be crawling on her brain. That, <laughs> so many O's. Oh, oh. No, yeah, 20 minutes, my mom got the call, and then she's like, she's like, Danny, you need to talk to your grandmother. You need to talk to mom all. I'm not going to deal with it. So I get on the phone, and my grandmother's just like, I swallowed a bug, and I swear it's crawling on my brain right now. And I'm like, mom all, there's no way, that there's like no hole for it to get to your brain. She's like, I swear I feel its little feet on me. And I'm like, are you sure that's not the crawling feeling of dementia slowly overtaking? <laughs> What's dementia? <laughs> now, see, I have, a, I have a very weird family. You can tell by that, but it literally is just like generation upon generation of weird, um, my, definitely on my mom's side. And it's just like, to give you an idea, my mom enjoys reading Christmas romances. That sounds really sweet, but let me finish the sentence. My mom enjoys reading Christmas romances year-round. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the only person keeping Debbie McComer in business. I don't know what she does. She goes to flea markets or something. I have no idea. But she, she has a whole tub full of Christmas romances, and she can recite them off the top of her head. Um, even weirder, my mom is the first person to try to trick me into seeing Two Girls, One Cup. For those of you who aren't aware, Two Girls, One Cup was an internet pornographic video that implied two women were eating feces out of a cup. And this is my mom. I'm on the internet, my mom calls me up at just weird time, she asks what I'm doing, I'm like, oh, I'm just on the internet, you know, looking stuff up. And she goes, hey, can you Google something for me real quick? She's still using Millennium Edition. She calls me up, 
to ask if I can look stuff up for her. She's like, yeah, I'm like, fine, it's whatever. She goes, okay, it's called Two Girl. No, Mom, stop right there. That is not going to fly. She goes, oh, have you already seen it? No, I'm never going to see it. What is wrong with you? She goes, oh, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Yeah, no, me and my mom, like, I love my mom, and, I, like, we're kind of the same person, but at the same time, I'm a queer trans woman, and she likes to send me uh, internet pictures of her two duck pipples eating her Confederate flags. So that's, it just doesn't work. It does not fit. She actually called me earlier today, and she was like, what are you going to do tonight? I'm like, I have comedy, and she's like, well, don't talk about me. And I just said, I am, and hung up really quick. And she called me back immediately, and she's like, what was that? I'm going to go nothing. Last time I was down visiting my mom, she was reading Vanna White's autobiography. I don't know if you ever read that, but she left it in the bathroom, so of course I had to read it. And apparently Vanna White at some point in college smoked a lot of weed, and she said the worst thing she ever did was eat a whole thing of meatloaf. And I got to thinking, I'm like, no, no, I'm not surprised that the worst thing Vanna White ever did while she was high was eat meatloaf, but I am surprised that she's not high all the time because she has the easiest job to do when you're high. All she has to do is look at something that's glowing, touch it, and smile. That's all she has to do. I don't know if you ever, I got, it, seriously, that's the easiest job you could possibly do. Anyone here a board game fan? All right, five people. Um, yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of board games. I've been playing Risk a lot lately, um, but the problem with Risk is that, you know, you come up with this whole strategy, you know, like, okay, I'm gonna attack them from the north, and as they run away, I'm gonna encircle them from the south. Makes perfect sense. But after about three hours, you've been butt-fucked across Eastern Europe, and all you have left is Madagascar. <laughs> and meanwhile, the person who's been rolling sixes all night is like, man, I've never played this game before. <laughs> we tried to spice it up by playing Lord of the Rings Risk, but after about 20 minutes, we're like, fuck this, these countries don't even exist. I found a pregnancy test in the parking lot of PetSmart. <laughs> now, okay, <laughs> the reason I was at PetSmart, I was trying to pick up a girl, I'm a dog person, she's a dog person. Anyway, I found this uh, pregnancy test and I'm like, what is the one possible situation that would lead to a pregnancy test being in this parking lot? And the only thing I could think of was <laughs> somebody, this couple comes up and the man's like, all right, we're gonna buy a dog. Are you sure we're financially secure? Uh, let me check. Oh yeah, we're fine. We're totally fine. <laughs> Speaking of piss tests, R. Kelly, anyone a fan? <laughs> One person's a fan of R. Kelly. You, all of you should be a fan of R. Kelly. R. Kelly has the, the perfect party song. It's a remix of a song called Ign Ignition. Has anybody, has anybody else heard that? If you haven't, there's one lyric that I've always been confused about. It goes like this. It's like murder she wrote, once I get you out from clothes. That sounds so sinister to me. Does not sound weird to anybody else? It's like either he's gonna murder this woman or she looks like Angela Lansbury. Either way, it's not gonna be pretty. Y'all have a good night. Yeah. All right, keep cupping like they know. All right, we still have local celebrities in the audience. We still have beautiful people in the audience. We're still live on imabl.com. There's a camera right there. We're streaming live, so everybody can hear you. Can you clap your hands? Come on, everybody in the still having a good time. You're still having a good time. Incredible. We have only a, a couple comedians left. Um, your next performer coming to the stage, drove all the way here from Forest City, North Carolina. He's new to the scene, and this is his first time at Pulp Lounge. So everybody clap your hands for my twin brother, Austin Smith. Clap your hands! Make some noise, everybody! We look like All right. Hello? So I was reading this magazine the other day, and in the magazine, Kim Kardashian and her mom were engaged in a fight because Kim had posed for some nude photos in a magazine. And her argument for why this was okay was that they were tasteful nudes. They're tasteful nudes, Mom. And this upset me philosophically because I don't care how tasteful a nude is, I'll still be jerking off to it. <laughs> but yeah, we're obsessed with celebrities, we are. We really are. And I think one day we actually will worship celebrities 
And this is how I think it's going to happen. So women love Ryan Gosling. They do. They love Ryan Gosling so much that they would accept his seed into their womb and have a little Gosling baby with Gosling genes. There's a demand for a celebrity sperm. There is. So why don't they donate it? It's really easy to make sperm. Trust me, it's really easy. So I think in the future, they will donate their sperm. And there'll be these huge refrigerated warehouses and just aisles and aisles of celebrity spunk. And on the bottom of the shelves, you have your top tier products, like your, your Bradley Cooper and your Brad Pitt and your Ewan McGregor and your Johnny Depp. And they'll go get the mechanical ladder if you want to go to the top. And you can get the Steve Buscemi or the John Goodman the one time a year that that happens. And they have a mechanical ladder. They, they do. It's like the Sam's Club of Sperm. And even after the celebrity dies, they can continue making the sperm. Because I don't know if you know this, but you can graft a human testicle onto a rat and it'll still produce human sperm. Google it and then erase your search history. <laughs> so we have these rats running around with celebrity testicles bobbing on their back. And one day, one of the rats escapes from the lab, a bunch of other rats follow it, and the Brad Pitt rat mates with a regular rat. And now we have these scary rat celebrity hybrids roaming around the sewer. Just a perfectly sheen Brad Pitt face that slowly descends into hairy Fight Club abs, and then a horrible rat body. So of course these rats hate humans. They're gonna storm the surface of the earth. People are gonna be freaking out. Oh my God, I just asked Christian Bale for his autograph and he chewed my leg off. The Brad Pitt rat. The Brad Pitt rat storms the White House and overthrows the US government. And then we are literally forced to worship celebrities under Brad Pitt, I'd have to king mandate. <clears throat> so I am a fourth year student at North Carolina State University. I am majoring in chemical engineering, and I work at Food Lion. <laughs> I feel this looming anxiety that I'm going to let Obama down. I almost want to preempt it with a letter, Dear Obama, I'm sorry I majored in engineering and then worked at Food Lion for the rest of my life. Sincerely, Austin Smith. Do you imagine reading that shit? <laughs> oh, throw this away. So, YOLO. That's what I want to leave you with tonight. YOLO. You only live once. Yeah. It's, YOLO is weird to me because the, the intention of YOLO can change depending on who's saying it. Like if Woody Allen said it. Well, New York City is a dangerous place, and you only live once, so you, you got to be careful. <laughs> it's different now. Also, don't like the imposition of YOLO. You only live once. You only live once, bro. So you got to fucking take life by the balls and fucking party hard every day. No, okay. Listen, you go ahead and only live once. I'm going to live a respectable life free from alcohol problems, or AIDS, or Frisbees. IOLO, that's your new phrase, I only live once. Don't involve me. All right, you guys. Uh, oh, I'm pumped about your next performer because today I got a message and it was like, I want to perform because I've never performed there. And I was like, you never performed here. Oh boy, that could be fun, right? Especially if there are people all over the place still. So everybody, I want you to give a warm national welcome for Todd Chamberlain. You know, everybody's talking about the jobs I do. I'm a teacher, I work at Food Line. I collect piss for a living. Yeah, you heard the worst part. My ex-wife hired me. I got benefits on Monday. And, uh, you know, let me tell you, you collect piss, your ex-wife hires you. Dry anal rape is right around the corner. You can feel it. And, uh, oddly enough, my urologist is here tonight. And, uh, let me tell you, here's a guy who checks my prostate. 
And uh, when he touches my ass, he thinks he's playing a game of Dig Dug. <laughs> he is. And let me tell you, there's two words. You know, I'm in, my, I'm in my 40s. And when you get your prostate checked, let me tell you, there's two words there's no comfort in. And that's this one. Oh my God, where are we? We're almost there. <laughs> when you're almost there, that's another word for forever. <laughs> and you know, I'm glad you did check me. I just wish it wasn't at your house. <laughs> it ruined the Christmas party. The kids were really confused about the mistletoe. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, uh, a year ago tonight, a year ago tonight, my mother, uh, my mother had a stroke. Um, she really did. And uh, you know, it'll really change your life. It really makes you think about, you know, things you need to do and what you need to do in life. But the one thing that I really knew when my mom had a stroke was that I probably wasn't going to have to pay her back the money I owe her. I approved that with my mom. I did it with my dad. He's outside with a crowbar. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, so my mom, you know, I wanted to help her out. She was there for 12 days. I was like, Mom, what can I do? She's like, Mom, I'd really like you to feed me. Will you feed me? And I fed my mom. It was, it was, it was so sweet. I fed her applesauce and I rubbed her hands. I said, anything else I can do? Well, I'd really like if you'd read to me. Read to me out loud. I was like, all right, I can do that. So I grabbed the book by the bed, started reading. You know that little monitor like checks your heart rate? It's like going, and my gosh, I started having another stroke. So I put down the Fifty Shades of Grey. I went and found a nurse, and she gave me War and Peace. And then she took the Fifty Shades of Grey and masturbated somewhere. <laughs> so, uh, anybody ever had your phone number like really close to another business? Like my phone number it was eight nine nine zero one time, and the Asheville Sleep Centers was eight nine zero zero. So my phone was always ringing. It was constantly ringing. Like, hello, is this the Asheville Sleep Center? No, no, wrong number. Hello, is this the Asheville Sleep Center? No, and you sound really fucking rested for somebody that's going to the sleep center. So one day, I, just, I couldn't take enough. I was working graveyards at the time, and uh, the phone rang. Hello, is this the actual sleep center? And I was like, yes, it is. But we're being very, very quiet. Is everybody sleeping? <laughs> I don't know if you're in business today, really, because I don't think you need a sleep center, because you have, well, you have Ambien. Now, when I was in college, I'd take NyQuil. i just wake up on the floor in a pile of drool in my kitchen. And then i just start taking Ambien. That shit's like, wow. You know, I wake up naked, cheese whiz all over my body, shit slung up on the wall in my neighbor's kitchen. <laughs> I'm from Pennsylvania originally. I went to a college. I went to a college called. <laughs> I went to a college called uh, Cookstown, which is right near Virginville, which is about seven miles from Blue Balls. <laughs> it's about nine inches from Intercourse on a map. And uh, you know, it's Cookstown, K-U-T-Z town, but. All the girls were such bitches. I always thought if you just added an end the kutz, it'd be perfectly describing the chicks there. Um, <laughs> how many of y'all have kids? Anybody? Yeah. yeah. I got a 15-year-old. He just got back from a cruise, and I said, hey, when you're done, I want you to unpack all your bags, you know, and stuff to do with that shit. So he's like, all right. So he unpacks his bag, and I look on the floor, and there's a suitcase. It's all unpacked. <laughs> We left the condom laying there. Like, you know, when I was a kid, I'd hide that shit. It was like CSI. Nobody could find anything. But he's got a lot of friends. He brought this kid home. And he's always like, hey, you know, it's my friend Dad Lefty. Lefty comes over a lot. He's over all the time. I'm like, you know, I'm not comfortable calling this kid Lefty. I feel like I'm talking to a fucking mobster. Hey, Lefty. <laughs> hey. 
So I'm like, what's his real name? And my son says, Feldman. <laughs> hey, Lefty, come on over. <laughs> Thank you, that's all I got. Yeah. All right, keep your hands clapping. That's what we're doing. We're still here. Claude, his daughter's still here. Don't get up. Claude, don't get up. Claude, no! Don't get up. Claude's daughter, don't get up. Just one more. Just one more. Oh, pretty lady, no, don't do it. Pretty lady, no, don't do it. I'm just kidding. Hey, you guys, um, we are doing a raffle tonight, and we've raised a lot of money for our good friend Shanoa, and her birthday's tomorrow. So I want you to give her a round of applause. It's her birthday tomorrow. Birthdays are so special. Happy birthday, girl. It's official. Is it midnight yet? Not yet? How much time do we have? Ten minutes? What if I stood here for ten minutes just waiting because I want to be the first one to tell you happy birthday? That's so me. I would totally do that. The next comic is laughing because he's like, bitch, really? Like, I'm trying to look it's time for me to go up. Okay. Everybody, this is my buddy, Charlie Snow. Put your hands together. We've still got comedy going on, you guys. Keep your hands going for Kelly Rowland, everybody. Stay home, stay home. Thank you. Kelly's standing here begging women to stay. Thank you for doing what's probably going to be the rest of my evening. 36 years old. 36 years old is a really uh, strange age for me because all the guys that I like grew up with, all, all of the guys that I like went to high school with, all of their daughters are turning like 16, 17, and 18, and now I'm not allowed to come over to their house anymore. Which is is appropriate, really. That's that's the right move on their, that's smart for them, that's smart. Uh, yeah, I was over, like, it's got so bad that I went over uh, one guy's house, house and uh, his daughter's in the backyard sunning herself in a two-piece bikini. She comes in, she's like, hey, Mr. Snow, what are you doing? I was like, I'm just sitting here thinking about how much your father's friendship means to me, which is a lot, I guess. I, I, I'm done with that though. I'm ready. I'm ready for the ring. I'm ready for the real thing. You know, I'm, I'm a grown up now. I, I don't. I don't even want that in my life. But it's so hard to date women. Like, have you ever been dating a woman for like three weeks and you get into it and you're like, hey, are you retarded? <laughs> like, no, seriously. Have you been diagnosed with special needs? Because I, I want. Like, I was dating this one girl, and she used to paint me like sketches of like babies in the womb with like horns and like devil tails and stuff and I'm like no and I made the mistake of leaving her alone in my house one day and I came home and like out of six of my shirts like the nipples were cut out and she was like I just really like the way your nipples look I want to see them all the time this way you can still be warm and I can see what your nipples look like and I was like no so I broke up I, I, I was like I'm ready to break up with her I took her out to a restaurant and we're sitting down, and I swear, like, the next words out of my mouth was, we, we can't do this anymore. And she hands me something across the table, and I see it, and it's, like, hair. And I'm like, what is this? She's like, it's, it's my vagina hair. It's a, it's a lock of my vagina hair. I, I wanted you to have this, because I, I feel like what we have is special. I made it myself. Like, I never, I, I, don't, I don't give this to everybody. I just, you know, I only give, I never gave vagina hair to and I dated her for like three more weeks because of that, because I was like, who knows, maybe what we have is special. It's like, I never had anybody give that to me before. <laughs> Let's see, I have a big dick. It says so right on the package. Magnum's extra large. There's no joke there. I just, I just take any opportunity I can to tell people that. The other day I was in the grocery store, and this lady's like, your change is 332. I'm like, I wear Magnum's, bitch. She's like, you didn't even buy condoms. I was like, I know, I just want you to know. You can go ahead and go and tell your friends and talk about it. Point me out when you see me next time. <laughs> Any lesbians in the audience? Any at all? Any lesbians? Yeah? Really? See, I, I can't, that's awesome. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Not because I have the wrong equipment. I just, too much juice, really. I think that's too much, like, they must have to, wash their sheets every other day because I, I don't know, it's just too much juice for me. Let's see. I used to date a, uh, well, I used to date a girl who was an avid air drummer slash gynecologist. It was awesome because she played like the air drums and I would play like air guitar and like my son would lip sync. 
You were like an awesome band you wouldn't mind living under. I was like, hey, I think they're practicing. Let's take a nap. <laughs> yes. I had to break up though, because apparently doing this over someone's open vagina is like really frowned upon in the medical community. I can't date a woman without a job. One more. I used to date this girl, she had like a laugh like a Ugandan prince. Like whenever I would tell her a joke, she'd go, ha 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 Then she would clap her hands and say, bring us some more mangoes. Bring us some more mangoes. And like, Why do you talk like that every time you laugh? That's really weird. So I guess I'm gonna let Kelly Rowland come back up here and announce her last comedian. And off, uh, clap your hands everybody. All right, thanks for staying, you guys. It means a lot to me. Look at these two on the love couch. You guys are so cute. What are you doing? Are you guys married? You're not? Are you brother or sister? Shit. Whoops. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, your next meeting coming to the stage. Has been here several times. He is part of our Slice family as well. Everybody clap your hands for Nick Raywall. Clap your hands. This is when it gets very intimate, you guys. This is a very intimate. We're all going to remember these moments when Nick wasn't in here ready to come to the stage. We'll all remember this moment on imavl.com. I'm just going to thank them and just stand here until Nick comes up to the stage. My buddy's here. Feels good. Don't think that I'm going to get feel awkward. I'll stay here all day. I'll talk about whatever. I'm Italian, and I was living with these guys, and they were like, you have neck hair. Like, we got to get rid of that. And I was like, I don't think that's, don't touch me. And then they did. They shaved my neck. They did. And then I thought they were going to, like, put a Nike swoosh in my head. And I don't live with them anymore. Now what am I supposed to do? It's a real Italian girl problem, everybody. We're going to skip Nick, and, um, and I'm going to talk to him after the show. It's going to be very serious talk, like, Nick, I was up there sweating, waiting on you, and you were just out there smoking cigarettes. You're nasty. Why? But I'll bring up your next comedian. He has his own show on AshevilleFM.org every Saturday night, 10 to midnight. He's a great friend of mine. He taught me that there's a place in town that serves chicken and waffles, and it's so good. Everybody clap your hands for Ben Atkins. Chicken and waffles. Remember when we went? No. Don't tell me that. No. No. And there's a place. There's a place on Merriman Avenue, and all they have is uh, crepes. No. And uh, tamales. No. And, uh, uh, like, what are the things that are, like, the pierogies, but they're uh, Spanish? What are those things? Empanadas. That's all they have. That's it. It's awesome. It's the great. Cecile's. Go there, everybody. I'm going there. It's awesome. We're just having a conversation. It's late, guys. Why are you still here? What's your problem? Get out. Kidding. Thank you so much. For Thank you so much. For remaining this evening, I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> just gonna do voices the rest of my life. Okay, that didn't work. Um, hi guys. Uh, uh, um, um, Ben, I got a beard it's right here. I I trimmed it up. I don't know if you noticed. I trimmed it up a little bit. Uh, a little concerned about it, because uh, uh, whenever I look in the mirror, I realize that I look like every abusive stepfather in a Lifetime original movie. Like, all of them. Like, not just the ones that, you know, all of them. I'll show you. Hold on. I'll show you. Hold on. You'll do it, because I tell you to do it. <laughs> uh, I, got, uh, I, got, I got all kinds of funny things to say. Um, uh, I, here's a, here's a weird thing, uh, I got, uh, jeez, I forgot, um, I, I, uh, I, <laughs> I have a dog, oh, thanks, thanks for the cue, appreciate it, it's helpful, it is helpful, uh, I, I have dogs, I do have dogs, I have two dogs, One, one's, uh, Tala, and the other one's, uh, Katie, uh, I love them like crazy, they're great dogs. Uh, uh, I, uh, they greet me at the door and I just go crazy over them. I love them so much. 
They're my little dinner bears. I love them. And uh, so when, when I come home, they're, they're always greeting me at the door, and I'm just so excited to see them. Hello. Hello. Hello, doggies. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. No, don't jump up. Don't jump up. It's okay. I know you're excited. And just stay right there. It's okay. No, do not jump up. No, no, it's a, Yeah, I know you're excited. It's okay, just stay right there and we'll just do this thing, okay. Hello, 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 hello. No, damn it, that hurts! Jeez, just stay down. Stay. Hello, 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 Because I'm an idiot, I love my dogs, it's stupid, it's dumb. And, uh, and I, you know, they're basically all I have to live for. That's, that's sad but true. I, I don't take care of myself. I'm a sickly person. I, I'm fat. I have this, the, this going on and then the, the jowliness. I'm trying, I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to take care of myself. I, I bought an app for my phone. Uh, it counts calories on the on the the barcode you can scans barcodes and it'll tell you how many calories are in the food the other day i scanned uh, a barcode for a five pound bag of jelly bellies and it just uh, said you're not taking this seriously and it uninstalled itself which was aggressive i paid 3.99 for that that was that was money out of my pocket and it's shaming me <laughs> i uh you know, I, I've been married a long time. I, 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 I'm married, I've been married 12 years to my wife. As opposed to whatever. As to, yeah, I know. It's, it's all part of the thing. Uh, we, we have a close relationship. We're very close. Uh, some, some say too close. I don't know. Is that a possibility? Apparently. Uh, I, I, okay, for instance, uh, if you have an entire conversation with your spouse while one or the other person is taking the shit, you're probably oh, too close. <laughs> it does. It does happen. <laughs> you're right. It does. But it's, it, but you know, take a break is what I'm saying. Just back it off. Just back it off. There's a door on the bathroom for a purpose and you're not, you're not using it properly. Uh, I, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I, like I say, I don't, I don't want really to take care of myself. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a wimp. I'm not, I'm not a tough guy at all. Like, actually, the toughest thing about me is my gag reflex. It's like, that's all I got. It's like, that's my main, uh, form of, uh, defense in a fight, basically, is just to vomit on my opponent and then just run away and get pummeled. Because uh, that just makes them mad. It just makes them mad when you vomit on them. It doesn't work at all. Um, is there a light anywhere? Is there a light happening? Okay. Wrapping it up. Yeah, yeah, we're wrapping it up. <laughs> wrapping it up, guys. Let's close her out. Uh, let's close with this. Uh, people say that violence is not the answer. I say it depends on the question. <laughs> I'd say the question is how do I get this gunshot wound in my chest? <laughs> violence might be the answer. Thank you, good night. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Ben Atkins one more time. Yeah. Incredible comedians, sold out, packed, pulp. That's awesome, slice of life. You guys live it. You love it, you laugh about it. It's incredible. This is, this is my first time here being a part of Slice of Life, officially behind the scenes. Kelly and Michelle let me be a part. And I love it. I love it. Thank you, guys. We had a wonderful night. Look us up on Facebook. We're giving uh, Ralphie May tickets away. So show us some love. Show us some support. Thank you guys for showing up. Drive safe. Yeah. Give it up for yourself and all the comedians tonight. Yeah. Trey, thank you for everybody working behind the scenes. Asheville Evan, thank you.
So last comic got called up. Didn't know he got called up. All right, so stick around for the last comic of the night. Me, Nick Raywalt. How y'all doing? Yeah, that was awkward, wasn't it? Like ending the show and then, then I'm here. Holy shit! It's fucked up. I was uh, I was indisposed at the moment. All right, yeah. I have a ton of excuses. I'm a nicotine addict. That's why I couldn't make it on stage. All right, so uh, I uh, I recently bought a uh, gallon of blue raspberry flavored fruit beverage. Fruit Rush brand. Fruit beverage. And the blue raspberry drink tasted exactly like the blue raspberries my mom used to pick for me and give me for uh, dessert. Blue raspberries are amazing. The only problem is that this blue raspberry drink makes me shit green. <laughs> Nothing good about shitting green. You start thinking you got all sorts of intestinal problems and you don't know what's going on. And uh, yeah, that's the fucking joke. I shit green. I'm an alien. Doesn't matter. All right, so I'm the last comic. So I'm gonna start interviewing all of you. All right, anyone can answer this question. Why did you stay for the end of the show? Yingling. Yingling. All right, that's a good answer. I like beers that rhyme with themselves. I, uh, I know I'm like in the comedy shitter right now because because I couldn't get to the stage because I was embroiled in a conversation that made no sense because everyone had been drinking. So I've been trying to get a, uh, I'm going to UNCA in the fall and I've been trying to get in-state residency. The only problem with getting in-state residency at UNCA is that you have to have somebody like with you for a year, like follow you around to get the residency. And if you leave the state, they're like, oh, 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 oh. you left the state. You're not a resident, you don't live here. It's not cool. Yeah, go ahead. all right, clean it up. Popcorn <laughs> trays, cheese, cheese ball trays, popcorn trays, everything's getting cleaned up. All right. Um, I have a uh, pet walrus, his name is Wilford Brimley. The only problem with Wilford Brimley is he's got a problem with chronic masturbation. If you've ever seen a walrus masturbate, it is uh, terrible to say it in a word. Someone hitting a bong? Oh yeah, all right. So it's that kind of party. Bring out that, uh, that old Cali weed. So, uh, being a stoner, hey, for, hey, yeah, come on, yeah, fifth bar, still on stage. All right, so, uh, I have a friend who's an ex-stoner who does not like me calling him man, dude, or bro. So he, so I go up to him and he says, uh, I say, what's up, man? He's like, hey, don't call me man, dude, or bro. I'm like, Sorry, man. He's like, what the fuck? I'm like, bro, dude, come on. Like, it's not a big fucking deal, man. He does. He hates that shit. Yeah. All right, Ben. This is my only option. Trying to entertain a crowd that is having conversations amongst themselves. They can't even like me because they're so busy cleaning up. I'll just keep going. I think I sit on. I'll sit down on the stool. The uh. Camera's off, so I'm not being I'm not being streamed on any uh, websites. That's good. I, I like to limit my web presence. People, my friends always tell me I'm a social hermit because I don't participate in Facebook. Right? All of you guys are on Facebook. Am I right? hey, clap if you're on Facebook? Yeah, boo. I, I like the, whatever happened to Friendster? He seems like the friendliest. Friendster's in the dumpster. Next to Zanga. Friendster and Zanga are gonna have a baby. 
It's going to be called The Death of the Internet. Uh, let's keep, keep going. I'll keep We're going. Comedy. All right. Comedy. Comedy. Crowd work. Crowd work. Crowd work. This couple here, do you, are you guys affiliated with the Orange Peel in any way? Because I am the pulp of the pulp. I'm the comic who didn't know that he was getting called up and then came up, saw the dude at, that was going on after me. I'm like, oh shit. This is a problem. That was a question, but I sort of trailed off. Um, so are you, why did you stay till the end of the show? Are you glad? Are you, I have jaundice? Oh, no, no. Yeah, the, the thing with the Mel Yellow shirt is I get all these like uptight hippies giving me shit about wearing a shirt with a corporation on it like it's evil. Like, like if I had the Mel Yellow thing upside down, I would be I would be like a rebel. But no, I'm just I'm just a coke whore at this point. I'm just selling coke, selling coke and coke products. Be better if I had a shirt that said I sell crack on it. That'd be great. Just a crack selling, mellow yellow, dirty, dirty bastard. All right, I think I've been up here for five minutes. Turn around. More bong noises? This is fun. Yeah, Nick. All right. Live on IMABO. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I am? Yeah. Right now. All right. Say hello to your mom. She's the only one. Look. <laughs> what? Right there. Right where? Right there. Wave hello. Right there. Up here. Okay. That's right here. Where we are. I, I don't understand, but that's cool. All right. Thank you for uh, bearing with that after the show is closed. I fucked up. I know I did. It's cool. You guys have been great. Everybody, clap your hands for Nick Raywood. And guess what? It's Chanel's birthday officially. So it's so good to be the first one to say happy birthday, girl. All right. Thanks to my brother Nick. Thanks to Trey. Trey, did, did you take your shirt off? Yeah. Trey took his shirt off. Show me your boobs. Show me your boobs. The up. pastor has gone. Oh my God! So excited to have Chad. Clap your hands up, you guys. Chad's Live Comedy will be here uh, July twenty first. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Love you. Bye bye. Kick me a fat beat, my brother. Kick me a fat beat. Slayer! 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 Slayer!